Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Satyajit Patnaik. In 2025, most of these companies have started implementing Gen AI solutions, and that also includes agentic AI solutions. In 2024, most of the companies were skeptical of putting their step ahead into generative AI. They were majorly exploring the use cases, doing proof of concepts, but 2025 is the year where they have taken one step ahead and started implementing generative AI solutions. I have talked with a lot of companies in Hong Kong because in Hong Kong, I work in a consulting firm where we deal with customers on a daily basis. My 25% of my work is to meet new customers, to pitch them generative AI solutions. And I know that the the urge of getting into generative AI has increased from the last year. Last year, if I would say that I have met around 20, 25 companies or maybe around 15 to 20 companies, this year I can definitely say the urge has increased to almost 200 or 300%. That means the same companies have started coming back to implement Gen AI solutions. And on top of that, there are many, many other companies who are also interested in this area. Now, when it comes to generative AI or agentic AI, the most important thing that the client usually asks whenever we go for pitches is which large language model do we prefer? See, honestly speaking, if we talk about a couple of years back, maybe in 2023 or 2024, there were some large language models that were outperforming on most of the tasks. But in 2025, the game has completely changed. Every week, there is a new update. Every week, there is a change in the leaderboard. In, in a particular week where Gemini tops, the next week, DeepSeek surpasses that. The next week, there is a new version of OpenAI, which does better than DeepSeek and Gemini. So every week the leaderboard is changing we can clearly say that if you pick any large language model especially in 2025 you can easily accomplish your task but still the choice of llm comes as a top priority for customers to discuss about they are very much interested in uh, safeguarding their use cases, safeguarding their data. Data privacy is one of the top concerns. And that is why there is a discussion about the choice of large language model. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the choice of large language model because it's the most asked question whenever we go for a client pitch. It is also one of the most asked questions in generative AI interviews as well. Many companies are asking this question of how to choose your large language model for your next generative AI solution. This video will definitely help you. Watch this video till the end. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you have anything else to talk about, you know where to ping you can write it down in the comment section. On top of that, as I have already committed that we will be coming up with a lot of project videos in case you have a specific requirement on any other project, you want me to come up with a project video. Next week is definitely going to be a project video. Let me know in the comment section and we will come back. See you in the video. I hope you enjoyed this. In case you enjoy, please like, share and subscribe the channel and let's get started with the video. Let's get into this topic of the choice of large language models. Now, in case you are asked about this topic, you can potentially give some examples and using examples, you can actually tell what the company was looking for and what have you proposed. For example, if somebody asks me about the choice of large language model, I ask them back, what is your choice? Do you have any priorities? Do you have a security concern? If not, why not we go for the simplest solution, which is using an OpenAI API, which can ease up the task. We can complete the POC within a couple of weeks. You can validate the use case. You can validate the results. And then we can go for the productionization part. If a certain company has some restrictions in using the large language model, 
they don't want public apis they want something else that's where the discussion begins right let's try to understand how many types of large language models are available right so in this market there are many many large language models first to get started with there are gpt models that includes various versions of gpt including gpt 3.5 gpt 4o gpt 4o mini and many many and they are by openai I hope everybody is aware of OpenAI because they are the owner of ChatGPT. The second type of large language model are the different variants of Llama models and they are by Meta. And of course, Meta is nothing but Facebook by Mark Zuckerberg. The third large language model which is very famous is DeepSeek. Next, we have Gemini, Bard, etc by google then we also have various models like amazon nova pro or nova light or titan by aws or you can write it down as uh, amazon similarly we also have various other things like grok 3 and it's by xai whose owner is elon musk we have quen which is by Alibaba. Similarly, there are many many other models like Mistral, Mixtral, Zephyr, etc. etc. And if you want to have a detailed list, you can potentially go to either Olama models or you can probably go to the web and check it out. You will be able to find tons of different other models. Right. Now the main question is choice. How do we choose which type of model? to work with right and this is where the most important topic comes that is how many types of large language models are there so if i have to differentiate large language models i will differentiate in this way one is public and one is private or i would call it as open source and public or i would like write write it down this way apis and open source now what do you mean by open source and what do you mean by apis apis means there are companies like openai there are companies like grok who are providing different apis and you can easily go to their websites, create an API key and get started with building something, right? And if you know, if you want to know more about these models, how many millions or billions of tokens are they trained with, you will be able to get their documentation online. So you can easily go ahead and check it out, right? So when it comes to APIs, further, I would divide them into two. One of them, I would be a public API and one of them will be a private API. Now, many of you might be thinking, what is public and what is private? Public API means anybody can access these APIs and one of the examples is OpenAI and the different versions of it like GPT 3.5, GPT 4.0, GPT 4.0 mini, etc, etc. The second public API is Grok. Apart from that, we also have Gemini. And there are many others where you can easily create a API key and get started with your implementation. When it comes to private APIs, they are a bit safe when it comes to data privacy. Now imagine a cloud provider like Amazon. AWS has a different, uh, so there is a service by AWS which is Bedrock. Now Bedrock is also providing multiple APIs. So let's go to Bedrock and I will be able to show you what exactly I mean by private APIs. So let's give it a 
go let's try to log into our aws account so this is my company's account so i'm just showing you what bedrock is if you go to bedrock the easiest way to build and scale generative ai applications if you go here you will be able to see that there are tons of models that are listed under bedrock that includes amazon's nova light nova pro anthropics cloud a and various other things you can also find deep seek various other things are there right so you can see deep seek is there anthropic is there um, ibm models are there nvidia also has some of their models like llama 3.3 nemotron and uh, hugging face models are also available ibm granite 3.2 gamma 3 multiple models are there right now you can also see their modality on what exactly are they they are whether into text generation or uh, they are into vision ai they are into image text to text image text to text basically means it's a ocr model right so there are multiple options under bedrock i will write it down as aws nova pro and uh, cloud a and etc etc right these are private apis and when i say private they are secured because it's through cloud it's through a service provider like amazon right so if we go to the next option which is open source what do you mean by open source open source means they are publicly available everybody can use it and it's completely free of cost they are completely free now open source can also be divided into two parts which is hugging face and olama now hugging face and olama what is the difference if you go to hugging face huggingface.co you will be able to find multiple models so this is an example tiny llama 1.1b which means it's a model of 1.1 billion parameters if you want to use hugging face you can simply go here and you have to physically download these models and you can see 1.1 billion model is like 2.2 gb right so physically you need to download them and once you download them you can use them olama is basically like uh, you can call it as a platform where you can install olama so installing olama is very simple you just have to install olama uh, the desktop version or the mac version and then once you run this your olama is running on your system and then you can easily go to your command prompt and do some olama queries like olama list or something uh, you will be able to you can see when i'm doing olama list you can see these are the two models that are already available on my local machine so installing a olama model is very simple you don't have to physically go to any location and download them you can easily download them through a command prompt right so both of these are free and you can easily use them now the topic is selection of these large language models and when to use if you want to do a quick poc where data privacy is not a concern in that case you should definitely go for this option because this is very fast fast poc time efficient right and it's not that costly as well cost efficient okay and you don't need a, a gpu or something no need of gpus no gpus needed gpus are not needed in case you want to do this similarly this is bit of a safer option this is still uh, as this is a cloud provider these apis that are being provided are considered to be safe so data privacy is not going to be in concern if you want to get started with a nova pro or something you just go to this model catalog enable them and once you enable them let's say i'm going to one model let's say nova 
right i'm just crossing it down nova pro you can see in my amazon nova pro looks available i just need to click here and start working with it and you can see the model id is provided and there are example quotes by amazon where you can easily invoke these models so you just need to make it available and using the access key what you get from amazon you can directly invoke these models from your code right so it's considered to be a bit safer data privacy is not an issue here and it is also fast i mean working with amazon bedrock is also very easy you just have to go here uh, and enable it and that's it cost wise yes it is a bit costlier than open ai or grok ai these kind of api is bit costlier uh, because aws also takes some cost uh, time efficient definitely it's time efficient so this is same this is same cost is bit costly no gpus yes no gpus needed see gpus are not mandatory if you have them you just make your systems uh, run faster your codes run faster that's it now these two the main advantage is it's free completely free but the disadvantage is that it's time it's not time efficient right you need a lot of time to implement these models cost the models are free but there is a storage cost which basically means you need a proper system a proper ram and gpus are not mandatory but without gpus you can only run some basic models like tiny llama or some 4 billion parameter models that's it 16 gb system can only run couple of models if you want to run some of the complex models you need a strong cpu or a gpu my system currently is 32 gb and i also have some um, some gpu in it i am able to run some of these models but i cannot run a 70 billion model for that i need even a powerful gpu right so this is basically all about large language models whenever we pitch to the clients we basically pitch with a comparison deck of the different type of large language models i have my personal favorite let's say grok and this one and let's say in olama we go for llama models so taking these as benchmark i usually create these decks where we have different models and pros and cons and we showcase this to a client we also have a deck deck for a potential uh, budget that will be needed so storage cost and all comes for open source models but for non open source models there is no issue on the storage cost and that is basically everything about large language models and i am pretty much sure that i think you have learned a lot in this video um, in case you liked it i will recommend you to post something on this video something nice uh, in case you have any other questions feel free to reach out in case your any of your doubts is not clarified please raise a comment and i will definitely definitely come back with a video or a shorts to answer your question in worst case scenarios i can reach out to you and try to help you on whatever doubt you have that's all about it and uh, see you in the next video